Hey everybody, uh, this is Jace bringing you another Ever Crisis video. Wow, it is, it's been a while. It, uh, gosh, it took so long for me, <laughs> for me to get this fight done. Also, I mean, the content's been a little bit sparse with the exception of, you know, what they released yesterday, like the new story, new level cap, all that kind of stuff. Um, but this is not meant to be a rant about the content or the crossover event because the, the boss fight for this, I think, is actually fantastic. So as you can see, I brought a team of Glenn, Zach, and Aerith. I brought them all up to level 57. Uh, for Glenn, you can see that I'm doing sort of like a mixed build. I have uh, his Apology in Hell as his main weapon because I have it over boost 1, which means it's a non-elemental physical attack that deals 600% potency and has a chance to crit. Um, otherwise, I'm giving him a bunch of attack stuff, a little bit of physical attack stuff as well. Uh, I have Zach here with his Halloween uh, event garb and weapon. I'm gonna be using him to put a defense down on the boss over and over and over so that he and uh, Glenn can repeatedly just use their physical, non-elemental uh, command abilities. With Zach, I'm running the Zweihander, uh, which I believe we got for free when we started the game, but I also got a copy of it just during random pulls, so I have that at Overboost 1 as well. Uh, and then for Aerith, uh, we're running the Chocobo Staff, the Halloween Event Staff, and Fairy Tail. Uh, the Chocobo Staff is going to help us with removing the magic defense down that the boss is going to be putting on our characters at the beginning of the fight. You can see the rest of my weapons and uh, stats here. Um, on Zack and Glenn, I brought Barrier Materia. That's going to help us survive Strike. Uh, on Aerith, I have a single target heal as well, and that Cura Materia. Um, so this is, this is going to be a pretty... This is a pretty complex fight. Um, I love when they make fights like this. I wish they'd given us more than one fight for the event, but I think the fight they gave us was a nice challenge. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video. I'll be walking through my strategy as the video goes along. So I'll see you in a moment. Alright, here we are at the boss fight itself. Uh, you might have noticed that I have two defaith materia, so make sure you get those here. I'm going to... Hit the boss with a defade. I'm going to use an ability on Zack just to make sure he doesn't uh, put the defense down on this main boss because we're not going to be targeting the main boss. Uh, we're going to be using the defade on Glenn and Aerith both to make sure we can fully wipe off that magic attack up on the boss. And we're just, just barely going to survive this attack. Look at, look at my character's HP. Whew. But that's consistent survival. Uh, so that, that strategy works. If you have about 6,000 HP, maybe slightly less, you can absolutely make this work. With Zack, you can see that I am... Uh, I have his Halloween weapon, which brings a physical defense down. Uh, so he's just going to be applying that completely on his own. And that's going to allow him and Glenn to slowly whittle down uh, the first Black Waltz there. Um, as you can see by the screen recording push notification, this took many, many tries. <laughs> this is a very hard fight. I actually tried a lot of different combinations. Um, I tried putting Matt in here because he's my favorite character in this game. I just couldn't get him to work. Uh, so unfortunately, this is another no Matt run. I know, heartbreaking. Um, but basically during this part of the fight, um, I'm for the most part letting uh, Zack and Glenn just hit the first boss, but I'll occasionally switch over to Glenn. To use his defaith on Black Waltz 2. If you don't keep Black Waltz 2 in check, he will just he will destroy <laughs> your party. Um, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm keeping an eye on Zack's ATP because I want Zack to keep hitting Black Waltz 1. If I target Black Waltz 2 at the wrong time, uh, Zack's gonna start putting his physical defense down on Black Waltz 2, which we don't need just yet. So I'm occasionally popping over to Glenn just to reduce Black Waltz 2's magical attack. Um, with Aerith, what we're doing, you can see I'm mostly controlling her, is I am swapping the defense mode to soak some of the attacks from Black Waltz 3, the AoE attacks, and some of the single target attacks from Black Waltz 2. Um, but I'm trying to time that switch to defense mode to soak those abilities with the AoE heals from her. Um, as soon as I get the limit breaks up for Zack and Glenn, I just go ahead and use them. They're going to be back up again for when we need them back up. Uh, so we just take out Black Waltz 1 there. So that's all done. Now we're working on Black Waltz 2. Uh, this part of the fight, there's no need to rush through it. Uh, this part of the fight, you just want to survive. 
Um, so I'm doing like a tiny little bit of min maxing on uh, Zach and Glenn's damage, but this isn't really isn't really any need to. Uh, you're not on a timer in this part of the fight. You just want to stay alive. Um, you want to make sure that you don't use any magic attacks on Black Wall 3. Uh, for anybody who's done earlier versions of this fight, or even the current version, the EX Ruin 1, uh, every once in a while you notice that Black Waltz 2 will say, this is how you use magic, and then he just nukes your party. Uh, that's what happens if you use a magic attack on Black Waltz 3 while Black Waltz 2 is still alive. That includes Defaith. That's technically a magic attack. So just ignore Black Waltz 3. In this version, the EX Ruin 1, he's not getting a stacking uh, magic attack up buff, uh, except for right in the beginning. So you can just ignore him. Focus on surviving, focus on killing Black Waltz 1, and then take down Black Waltz 2. Um, and then you can go ahead and move on to Black Waltz 2. Uh, you can see that I'm also using Aerith's Chocobo Staff, uh, which provides a single target magic defense up uh, to a party member. I'm just using that to remove the magic defense down that Black Waltz 2 applies with his teleport. So now that he's uh, now that Black Waltz 2 is all done, we can just focus on Black Waltz 1. And my goal here is not to, you know, get through this gauge very quickly. My goal is to make sure that by the time we are through the gauge, our whole party has full HP. And that's because we're going to go straight into limit breaks as soon as he switches over to his next phase. In the meantime, you can see that Glenn has a huge magic attack down, uh, which is why I opted to bring two physical attackers. Because uh, I didn't pull for Aerith's uh, staff. Uh, this is... I didn't pull for any of the event weapons. Uh, so I can't really do anything about that magic attack down. If you have Sephiroth, uh, his Aonibi uh, can actually get rid of that magic attack down. So if you want to bring him, you have his... Uh, he has like a weapon... I think it's like Shinra Blade? That has a non-elemental magic attack. Uh, he can work well here. Um, I tried him out, but I, I landed on this team instead. Now, once the gauge is done, this is where the timer starts. This is where you really need to start min-maxing your damage, uh, because it's on a timer when he goes over to his next phase, and once he enters his next phase, um, you only have so much time to to kill him. Uh, you have you have a lot less time in the EX Ruin One compared to the previous uh, Black Walls fights, so you have to be very very careful. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure Glenn doesn't use Defaith because he will default to that. <laughs> He'll use Defaith instead of his uh, single target attack. Um, here you can see me absolutely spamming Seal Evil. Um, Zack and Glenn have level 8 limit breaks right now, so that the level 57 comes in handy there. Uh, Aerith's Seal Evil, I believe, is only level 6 because I wasn't ever planning on getting Seal Evil, but I got it just for this fight because I <laughs> really, really wanted to clear it. Um, but you can see, as soon as he swaps over to this next phase, he gets a physical defense down and magical defense down on himself that are permanent. Uh, so we take advantage of that, go straight into limit breaks. You can see that I kind of banked up some ATP on Aerith, and that's because I want to be able to heal whoever gets targeted as soon as Strike goes off. So here, Aerith gets targeted, which is just fine. Uh, with Zack and Glenn, I'm focusing on dealing damage, trying to make sure Glenn doesn't use Defaith. I know that my Aerith can survive this without me using Barrier on her, just barely, as you can see. And so I can go ahead and single target heal Aerith right after that. I'm again trying to make sure that Glenn is using Twin Hell instead of Defaith, uh, but here you're going to start getting AoEs. So you want to make sure you heal up the person who got hit, um, and you can see I'm also stance dancing with every AoE. Uh, you have time to do that, while for the most part maximizing your attack stance in between. Um, so I'm just stance dancing, trying to heal up, and again, just trying to make sure that Glenn doesn't use Deep Faith. Next thing you're going to see here is a stream phase. So you don't have to be fully healed up just yet, but you do want to bank like a little bit of ATB on some characters if you can. Um, if you don't have somebody who can destroy Triangle Sigils really well, this will be a little bit tight. But thankfully I have Zack, and he wasn't selected. Zack can knock out five Triangle Sigils at a time if your attack stance is maxed. Here, you want to make sure you heal up, but you can see I'm kind of jumping around from character to character, again trying to maximize damage as much as possible, making sure Glenn doesn't use defaith, but you can't always do that perfectly, but you want to be healed up here. Here he will uh, use single target spells, so you just want to be ready to do a single target heal. Um, we end up surviving just fine, 
uh, timing everything well so that everybody's maxed out here. Uh, he's going to do another strike, uh, another unavoidable one, uh, but here, with this strike, you want to make sure that whatever character is being targeted is going to survive it. So in this case, it's Glenn. I know that I need to use a barrier spell on either Glenn or Zack to make sure they survive, so I use Zack to use the barrier spell. Switch to defensive stance. After this one, no more healing. This is a DPS race now. So uh, I didn't want Aerith to heal there. <laughs> Unfortunately, I wasn't controlling her at the time, and so she went ahead and did it. But from this point forward, only damaging spells. So you can see on Aerith, I'm using her uh, Ruinra. As soon as I have all three limit breaks up, and I have the uh, full attack gauge with 50% damage up, go ahead and use all three. There's a slight chance that at the end, the last surviving party member can get their limit break up. It's very, very slim. Um, there have been many times where I'm, I swear I'm like 1% away of having the limit break gauge filled before the boss kills the last party member. So try to get that out as, as early as possible, uh, as long as you can maximize the damage. But again, from here on, it is a damage race. Uh, so you can see I'm trying to make sure that uh, Glenn is using Twin Hell. I'm trying to use Ruinra on Aerith. And for Zack, I'm just trying to make sure that the physical defense down debuff is always up. Uh, thankfully here, he targeted my healer first. Uh, this is an auto-kill. You're not surviving 56,000 damage. There's nothing you can do to survive that. So this is a phase where he's just going to start slowly killing off party members one by one. He'll kill a party member, get stunned, kill a party member, get stunned, and then he'll kill your fin her final uh, party member. Uh, so here, um, that's about it. I'm just trying to do as much damage as I can. At this point in the video, I'm like starting to get really nervous because I'm realizing, oh my gosh, there's a path to victory here. I could actually kill this boss. Um, but at this point, the boss's HP is low enough that uh, he could have targeted Zack or Glenn here. It didn't really matter. Whoever was left alive was going to be able to finish him off because he didn't target uh, Zack or Glenn first. And with this last slashing thrust, we are finally able to clear this fight. Oh, oh man. Uh, so... The keys here were uh, getting defaith, so go ahead and do the new crisis dungeon on normal. That's where you get the defaith recipe uh, that allowed me to basically vary up my team comp a little bit. I didn't have to bring a magic attack down weapon and open things up a little bit for me. Uh, but there you go. That is the clear. Uh, I hope this helps people who are struggling with this fight. It's a really tough one if you didn't pull for these event weapons, but it's definitely doable now that we have level 57 and defaith. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.